All right, what's the situation here? We got ripe for the offering and right the winds. What the dinkus? What is ripe for the offering? Hold on, hold on. Dry run, dumpling delivery, molting season, danger on the dock. Strong foundation, mesmerizing moss. Look, I can't do Icelandic to save my life, and I'm not going to try. It's just not going to happen. Why is Jesse's character dressed like a tourist? Because I'm on vacation. Look at that little guy. Is that quest over here? What the shit? What these these? What these? What these these? Oh, okay. You're welcome, much companion, are you? Aren't you? Kishihi, smiles upon me. I'd hoped the great bird, the great bird, would guide me to one of the village saviors. To me, you see, the time has come for us to make our customary offerings to the Kishihi. The ceremony will hold dear, and I would invite you to participate as an honored guest. Okay. Will you join us then? Oh, that makes us so happy. Let's go. Traditional offering is fruit that grows in the southwest. Must be so ripe they fall. All right. Yeah, I know how this works. Background music going. Flying T Rex. Got my Chuckle Burker mount from just one stream. Congratulations! Congrats. Oh, okay, thanks. Easy lookout. Dang. A rewoven statue of the Han Hono Didi Kicks Kishia. Kishii. -e is ensconced here in a place of worship. The shrine is believed to stand on sacred ground, a holy dry land blessed by the sun's rays in the otherwise swampy terrain. Oh, hello. To what do I owe this honor? 
Here, have some fruit. Oh, damn, is that fruit? Ah, Keisha E. -E will be most satisfied with these. Today, you are more than an honor guest. You are the very heart of the ceremony. After your efforts to bring back Iana to us, uh, back to us, Ke Keisha E is doubtless overjoyed to see your role in this whole thing. So anyway, get out of here. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. A lot of quests here. I'm look I'm looking I'm look I'm trying to find I'm trying to find my boy. I'm trying to find my little tiny baby boy. Where is my baby boy? Welcome back! Was Lanuhali impressed with your offering? So impressed, have blessed fruit. Yes, I can feel Keisha E's grace emanating from these. Thus, the ceremony is complete. Cool, now, now have a bit of wind. I feel so enriched. Now give me the wind. Yes. Just got the wind. Molting season, dumpling delivery, uh, stretch the... There's gotta be... All right, let's just go check these out. Hey, any of y'all seen a little corn boy? You ever seen... Y'all y'all seen a corn boy around here? <gasps> yes. The corn servant rustles. Oh boy, here we go. My friend, what brings you all this way? Digging in the sides, sounds, and flavors of Dural, I trust. As you may have guessed, there is a Hanu Hanu in need of my assistance. And as I yet lack the strength to make myself seen, I'm in need of your assistance. Follow me, and I shall take you to them. Yeah, let's go, corn. Corn, 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 corn. What the? Despite her bright and colorful plumage, her stomach has left her with a rather gloomy disposition. Ah, oh, my stomach. I can't stand this rationing any longer. My house was flooded in a recent storm, causing most of my food to spoil or rot. I've taken great pains to make what little I have last, but it's simply not enough. I see. She requires food for longevity. Then she shall have the driest of corns my cob can muster. And there, this should suffice. My word! Is all this dried corn for me? It'll be many moons before I can hope to diminish such a bountiful store. And the crunch is uh, certain to be sublime. Thank you, kind stranger. There's hope for the future yet. Oh, the children will be thrilled. She seemed quite taken with the dried corn. That is well. I shudder to think what havoc spoiled foods might play on her stomach and bowels. Hunger might well be the least of her problems. Thanks to your timely assistant, however, she and her family will have all the corn they need to help them weather their hardships. <laughs> Yet there are mm, other empty bellies that beckon, and so I must away. Take care, friend. I hope to see you again. I gave corn from the corn servant's body 
to that woman and she ate it and then he was like here have some more corn and i said okay shout out to corn servant All right, what is this? Is this another, uh, is this another? Aha! Yes, help performing an honor tradition. I would love to take this. Oh, golly, little. Of course I know your name. Who isn't familiar with the Waklamot's companions? Not to mention your friends can't seem to go a moment without mentioning you, huh? I'm Lanu Hanu. Now the honor of being the wind's chosen. It's my feathers which adorn the festive float. I feel the wind has guided you to me for a reason. As a visitor to our village, who has fast become an honored friend, I would offer you a chance to strengthen our bonds. Perhaps you're familiar with the Lands Guard. It is customary among the wind's chosen to save their molted feathers and present them to these brave protectors as gifts every few years. At this very moment, one of their numbers making their way to Okohanu, uh, Okanu, to receive our offering. But there's much more to it than a simple delivery, and I think you'd be interested in taking a part. It would deepen your understanding of our ways, and perhaps you and this member of the Lens Guard will become fast friends. I would, uh, I would start with a small task, if you're willing. Nahanashi is the name of our guest. And he was due to arrive some time ago. I fear maybe lost. Could you search for him on the road? Yeah, all right. Hanu Hanu, unless you're just molting something awful. Ah, so that's the way of it. Well, now that you found me, I suppose I better get on with it. Sorry for my lack of enthusiasm. I joined the Landguard hoping I could bust some skulls, slaughter some beasts, you know, use these muscles of mine. But for my first assignment, I'm lugging crates of supplies around. It's not exactly what I had in mind. Eh, I suppose complaining won't get us done any faster. Let's go meet this Lanu Hanu then. You alone? I thought I was just coming to pick up some feathers. My superiors didn't say anything about helping someone. You found him! Now we can begin! Before the gift of feathers is to be bestowed, there are proper steps that must be taken. Firstly, I bid the warmest of welcomes to Nana Nahanashi. As the wind's chosen, it is my solemn duty to show you what sights our humble village has to offer. As one of the land guards, it behooves you to become familiar with all corners of the continent, yes? Then come with me to the center of Okanu, uh, where you can behold the entire village at once. Okay, I'm just going there. Pretty, pretty cool village, huh? Take it all in, this is Okanu. As you can see, our homes are made from wood and reeds, both of which the forest blesses us with in abundance. But nature's blessings are to be treated with care, for dried reeds can easily catch flame. And if they do, we were setting our entire village alight. Putting waterways through Okanu is a way to protect us from such incidents, but aquatic beasts can travel them as well. And when these beasts become too great in number, we beseech the land guard to call them. Do you now? I always thought hunting duty was just a way to keep us sharp. 
While I'm here, I'll make sure nothing troubles your home. All of Ogata would thank you. And now for the reason you came. The feathers of the winds chosen. They're used to adorn the equipment worn by the Lance Guard. The design evokes the image of Kishihi, Kishai'i, the great bird revered by all Hanu Hanu. The feathers give it a touch of authenticity that make the soldiers appear all the fiercer. Every soldier outfit is designed according to their profession, and each feather must undergo an elaborate process of dyeing and oiling to meet the Landsguard's very needs. So without further ado, let us begin. I first ask that you come meet me at the gate to the southeast. <laughs> Fine, I should warn you. I'm not known for my delicate hands. That went about as well as expected. Could you stay behind for a moment, Little? I would like to hear your opinion on Nahan Nahanshi. He really does not want to be here. Mm, but he's also not the most motivated person. <sighs> Let's be honest. I have the same impression. Truth be told, his attitude is the same as every land guard troop who comes to receive this gift. We're meant to fix it. Consider this a rite of passage of sorts. The land guards send us troops whose rough edges want for polish, and the tasks we set before them serve as the whetstone. Over the course of our work, they gain a great insight into the history and meaning behind the exchange of gifts. Soldiers with tangible bonds to their charge protect it all the more staunchly. In recent days, however, even our treasure trove of knowledge has been enough to rouse the spirits of some. But working alongside someone as capable as you, Nahanshe may find the extra motivation he needs. Now then, let us proceed to the southeastern gate. And while this goes without saying, keep this little conversation between us a secret. What did I do to deserve this? Now I know my superiors were snickering behind my back as uh, I departed. The Hanu Hanu might think this bird god is worth all the trouble, but I just want to get this over with. Great, I'll come back to the two of you later. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, we'll get it, get it over with. Not right now. I believe that's it for this. Don't worry, I'll do it. I'll do it, I know how that stuff works. Bayside Bevy, playing host to a never-ending stream of customers. The largest marketplace in Tuliolo is replete with goods from every corner of Tural. Proximity to the harbor ensures that cargo unloaded from the boats and barges be transported directly to the shelves of local merchants. That's literally what we were told upon entering this area. So I guess that checks out. Hey, I know that guy. Just like that, 
We found an elector and won our first keystone. I knew I was right to trust your instincts. Come on, let's keep moving and march onwards to Urkupacha. Chances are good we'll find an elector there as well. Before we do anything, however, we should see what your opportunist, opportunistic Pelu friend has to say. I've been waiting for what feels like days and eat enough Brook Ivo's tacos to feed an army. What, what was it you like to know? Our main concern was confirming the state of the road ahead. As I recall, to reach Urkapacha, we depart from the Arch of the Dawn. Then take the road west at First Fork. Should we be wary of anything along the way? That is indeed the way to Urkapacha. After the damage wrought by the recent downpour, however, you'll be doing more stumbling than walking. I'd like to know how your Walk Lamont impression is like perfect, but your Anvil is like broken Brooklyn Joe. learn how to do an Icelandic accent, but I just simply can't. My brain can't put it together. My brain to mouth corridor for Icelandic is not a thing that happens. So he's from the Upper Peninsula. But do, but do take heart. When it comes to rugged terrain, it's going to be totally fine. Come with me. Quest is, but yeah. If you must know, the reason why I stick to the voices I do is because a lot of the time the voices don't have voices when characters are first introduced. So I got to give them a voice, and then suddenly, here I am. And people are like, we got to change it now. I'm like, do I though, bro? Do I though? Talking to a Pelu before we de uh, departed was a wise decision. I, for one, would rather not brave a treacherous, slippery trail on foot. The Pelu Pelu all being small is confusing enough. But those ma masks make it almost impossible to tell men from women, let alone guess their age. What are you trying to say? Alice, what are you trying to say? My, are these fluffy babies or mounts? Oh, why did it have to be alpacas? The beasts, the be the be the beasts are short-footed. That is for certain. That's the best I can do. The the beasts, the be the beasts are are short the short foot. For that is for certain. I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> what do you want from me? I can't do it. <laughs> May I introduce you to our most dependable companion, the alpaca? Oh my god. The 
these animals could traverse Urquipache's steep mountain trails as if they were gentle fields. And all while carrying heavy loads, our merchants would be lost without them. So they fill much the same niche as our chocobos back home. You don't have alpacas in Eorzea? Hey, alpacas are native to... Hold on. Alpacas are... No. Alpacas are... No. Alpacas are... No. I got... Alpacas, they're native of the Octoral. Eorzea has his chocobos and the eastern lands have their horses. Why go into trouble of breeding another pack beast in a place that ill suits the qualities where it's not even needed? Hmm. But must we ride these little monsters? I get the impression you aren't fond of alpacas. When I was small and being a bit naughty, I went around pulling on their wool. One of them spat on me. It was the foulest stench you can imagine. <laughs> I see. And what do they like to ride? Hey, alpacas bred as mounts are inquisitive and docile. Even those without experience find them easy to handle. Well, we're really doing this then. So, was my information useful to you? Yes, very helpful. Even though I wasn't tr uh, it wasn't what I wanted to hear. Good. I'll take my payment now. You want me to pay you? I should have guessed. Uh, I guess I should have expected as much from a Belo merchant. Let me see what I have on me. Belo Pelu, uh, value the act of spreading joy through trade. As you should know, they take pride in making deals that benefit both parties. Fair trade! Little JC knows all about that. You give me money, and I benefit you by shouting fair trade at you. Here you go, fair price for your fair advice. Yes, I made a trade with the third promise herself. My friends will never believe this. I shall be on my way now. I wish you safe travels. Off you go then, and thank you. Fair trade. I better not get spit on again. You brought that on yourself. <laughs> Remain calm and they'll gentle and they'll do the same. It's all good. I'm not happy about this. But if we need to ride our backers to reach Ukubacha, and that's what we'll do. Yeah. Well, JC just kind of off to the side, like, sure, yeah, all right. Yeah, whatever. Oh, new intro and Erval. To rally poets of yore sang of a mountain that would stand tall even should all other lands sink beneath the sea. Indomitable and eternal, it arises from Urkopacha, the hundred peaks of time. Of all the beasts which crawl and fly, only the legendary Valikarmanda could hope to disturb the summit's serene majesty. Yet with that flying calamity imprisoned by the Dawn Serpent, what great feat remains for those who would claim the throne? I bet that looked beautiful if it was daytime. <laughs> so this is Urkopacha. I've never actually been here before. is so crisp and clear. Mountains everywhere you look. That one massive peak in particular has quite the presence. It puts me in mind of Som Arl. That is Warkor Sormor, the tallest mountain in Yorktural. Its sheer height makes it an imposing climb. 
But there are other reasons the ambitious keep their distance. Oh? Do tell. <sighs> Where to begin? Excuse me, but you're Wuk Lamat, are you not? I, I hadn't thought to encounter one of the Dawn's promise here of all places. Aaronville just wants to talk, and everyone's like, shut up, you. Story time. Uh, but, but I should introduce myself. I am Bol Nok, a weaver by trade. That man just hit us with the Bol Nok. Well met, Bol Nok. We're on our way to watch Unpello. Oh, truly. <laughs> I've just come from there, as it happens. I'd asked the Pelu Pelu who sell me their wool to give me a tour of their alpaca ranch. The head rancher and I shared a bottle of mezcal while he explained the finer points of wool production. So you wasted right now. Mezcal? Is that a local beverage? It's an Urco Pacha specialty. A spirit made from distilled agave heart juice. Yes, and it must have done wonders for my mood, for I tripled my usual order of alpaca There it is. Wool. There it is. Offer me a discount, though, so it wasn't a bad deal in the end. <laughs> ah, but listen to me, boring you with my tedious stories. I, I will leave you before you are lulled to sleep. Uh, goodbye, and safe travels. Silly me. I almost forgot to say the thing I actually wanted to say. Peace for Tural. I agree with your vision, Third Promise. You have my support in your bid for the throne. I gather from his tale we would be foolish to underestimate Pelu Pelu merchants. Yes, they do more than run the markets in Tuliola. Pelu Pelu peddlers can be found everywhere in Tural, traveling from place to place on their sturdy alpacas. They are effusive and engaging speakers, and many is the customer who's been talked into spending more than they bargained for. They won't find this customer so easily charmed. We're about to get double charmed. We're about to get double, triple charmed. Vachun Pelo is down the path. Off the main road. Don't get lost. It's right there. Hey, that's a nice little outfit. <laughs> Stop. That's <laughs> cute. That's cute. It's cute. That's cute. See more buildings down the path Bolnook was the taking. I wonder what's over that way. I feel the change in altitude most keenly. While mayhap not the same degree as Sea of Clouds, the air is decidedly thin here. The palace crowds were more supportive of her brothers, but Wak Lamont's peaceful politics do have their quiet adherence, I see. This it. This is no. This is it. Urgurgurgurgur. The home of the Pelo. And I got. I got nothing. I got nothing. Yeah, this is it. Watching Pelo. Home of the Pelo Pelo. What the much have arrived before us? I got nothing, guys. I got nothing there. <laughs> That's not good. Of 
You've come all this way for the right succession? Oh, so that means I'm exchanging words with the future Dawn Servant. Please, the outcome is far from decided, but it is a possibility. How fortunate then that I deal in cloaks woven from especially luxurious alpaca wool. Such a garment would look magnificent when draped over the shoulders of our budding ruler. <laughs> and a nation's ruler should dress her best for adorning people, yes? Finery for our finest lady, that's right. Come, third promise. My well stocked shelves are but a few steps away. Finest lady? <laughs> I like the sound of that. All right, I suppose a quick look wouldn't hurt. Ahem. <clears throat> what are you. What did you. What did we just talk about? Blah. <laughs> Hold on. Maybe more R twirls will get it. Ahem. <clears throat> Uh, um, what did we just talk about? Nope, nothing. Nope, it almost sounds. Mm, I don't. Mm, I don't like. No. Nope, mm, nope, I don't like it. Aaronville, when did you? Ah, a Shitona from our off Jacques Chiral. Northern winters are bitterly cold affairs. I'm told. I cannot imagine how you survived them without a lovely warm cloak of quality alpaca wool. No, thank you. Wait, so this man is from the north? He's from he's from the northern continent? First off, that makes him American. Second off? Frozen north? Was I right? He's, you know what? He's from the Upper Peninsula. I don't care what anyone says. No, thank you. I'm not in need of clothes at the moment. I am in need of a sixer and some timbits, you know what I'm saying? Gotta get some sixers and timbits over here. Two, three beer? Of course, of course, my shop is always open. You were saying something about not be, oh. You were saying something about not being easily charmed? 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 You were saying something about not being easily... I can't do it. I can't do it! Hey, you were saying something about not being easily charmed over there? I was just... Uh, as I previously... Me hold on. As I mentioned previously, the Pelu people... No, it doesn't sound right. L live for bringing happiness through trade. They won't cheat you or sell you defective goods. <laughs> they will, however, disarm you with their deft turns of phrase and unwitting customers like what? Hold on, maybe this Swedish chef. They will, oh, hurdy gurdy, ergen begurgen. They will, however, disarm you with their deft turns of phrase and unwitting customers like Wakulamat fall prey to this affable approach time and time again. <laughs> Holy shit! Your only recourse is a clear and firm refusal. They won't pursue the matter should you make your disinterest plain. <laughs> I just had a channel the Swedish chef! A valuable insight into the minds of the Pelu Pelu. Let us all take Enerville's words of caution to heart. <laughs> Did we just double Red Mage nod? Red Mages were on the same page. I cannot believe that worked. Neither can I, I'll be honest. Neither can I. Uh, here's the real thing. I swear, I let her out of my sight for one moment. I feel like we got it. I feel like we got it. Look, Lamont is lucky to have Aaronville. Everyone, royalty especially, needs a friend unafraid to chide them when the need arises. Whoa! It would seem the Pelu Pelu are partial to coffee. All these houses and buildings made to Pelu Pelu size, and mine too, come to think of it. 
What's that mean? What's that mean? What's that mean? What do you mean by this? Hold on. What do you mean by this? Hold on. What do you mean by this? Is there a Lala house? <gasps> Is there a Lala house? Where are you, Lala house? Where are you? I know you're here somewhere. No Lala house? Heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Might as well get these. Yep. Thank you. And then we'll come over here. Yep. Thank you. Alpaca filet, eh? Nothing. <laughs> Eat it, tall people. Yeah. <laughs> Small people village. Small people village. Yo, what the hell is this? Hold on. All right, first off, I love this. So when I was in Peru, every place we went, every single place we went, this was the vibe. Have I shown you the plate of food I got? It's one of the few photos of food I've ever taken in my life because it was straight up just like the most food I've ever seen. So one day we ended up in a small town and we went to like this small cafe. And by small cafe, I mean, I think it was in the person's house. I think. And uh, they gave me a plate of food. And this plate of food was literally just like one of the biggest plates I've ever seen with everything on it. Literally just meats and potato and then like avocado and tomato. And it looked just like this. Here's the thing. Half the time we go somewhere, there'd just be a bowl of potatoes. And I'm gonna let you know, hey, Americans, we fucked up. We fucked up. All we have are like Idaho potatoes, maybe a few russet, russets, those little purple babies. Peru has so many good potatoes. Y'all, we fucked up. We fucked up. There's so many types of potatoes. Like 80-some potatoes. And we are rolling light on pot I had a potato. It looked like it looked like a poo. It looked like a turd. It was the most delicious, flavorful potato I've ever eaten in my entire life. It was so good. It was so delicious. I'm so upset. We, we screwed up. We screwed up. We let the country get overrun with, with crap potatoes. They got good ass potato, man. It tastes. It was so good. So upset. Also, they had a lot of different corn. There was corn where the kernels were like this big and like this big and like this. Big. I got. I was. I. They won. They like fried the cur man. I'm so jealous. They just gave us a bowl. And in the bowl was like seven different types of potatoes. And I and they were all little small boys. And I was like, you kidding me? It was delicious. It was delicious. It was so good. And I ate a lot of guinea pig. That's something that occurred. So if you get weirded out by eating, eating stuff that isn't very American, I don't know how to help you. Yeah. 
It was good. It tastes good. Yeah. No, they no would be like. Yeah, it was delicious. It was fine. Tasted great. Yeah, they farm them as a meat source. It's like, look. Oh shit, he's getting in. Oh, you know what? Man, that's a Mandeville man. He deserves to be in. He deserves to be in. If anyone could get in, it would be Godbert. Godbert can definitely enter. The rest of you talls are not allowed in. No talls are allowed inside. Only the smalls. Shout out to this game giving Lollafell's little tiny homes to, to invade. <laughs> Wait, Yoshida. If we can invade little tiny homes, we can invade people's shoulders. With permission, of course. He's in! Oh shit, he got in! And then he danced out like, I don't even need to be here. Damn. 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 Whoa. Whoa. Oh shit, it's so funny. All right, let's keep going. They made it seem like these alpacas were carrying all this weight on their back. They're literally floating it here. Well, that's not the same. <laughs> that's not the same at all. Not my finest moment, I'll admit. But now that we're stuck here, or, now that we're here, even, let's do what we came to do. Find the Elector. Allow me to propose a strategy, then. Cryle, Alice, and I will speak with the merchants. Walk Lamont, you and Erinville might, uh, try approaching travelers and passerbys. Little, pray investigate any of the other establishments uh, which catch your eye. Should we learn aught of use, let us rely on the third promise. Okay. They wheeling and dealing over here. <laughs> Distillery worker, A. Eh? The Don Servant's Elector? Ah, I thought you were a new face in town. Here for the right of succession, I take it. Me, I don't care much who sits the throne, so long as they keep her all peaceful. People tend not to be in the mood to relax and sip our excellent mezcal once arrows and spears start flying, if you know what I mean. Speaking of which, would you like a cup? A joy shared is a joy doubled, I'd say. Look, I do not accept cups from strangers. I'm so, yeah, you know, I'm, it's a personal thing. But a fresh return from my trading route, I've heard there's a contest afoot. All right. No, I don't take booze in cups from strangers. That is a lesson I've learned multiple times now. <laughs> Little JC does not. Nope. I need to know. I need to know where it came from. Anyone check on Astinian? May need to keep him from the Pelu. I hope he's fine. Who knows what he's doing? Yeah. Also, I don't want to specify why little JC wouldn't drink for spoiler purposes. But let me just tell you, it does not end well. Electors? Oh, yes, I've heard about the right of succession. They're looking to put a new ruler on the throne, eh? Personally, I'm rooting for Zoralja. But the first promise wins. He'll look to expand our sphere of influence. That means access to more resources and, cust and more customers. The thousands column, potentially. So many new trading opportunities to spread happiness far and wide. 
Others have been coming around to my way of thinking, so I've begun crafting goods inspired by the resilient sun. Would you care to purchase something? Please just answer the, <laughs> Please just answer the question. Very well, you said you wanted to know about the Elector. I could help you, but I won't. I can tell you're no supporter of Zoralja or his policies. Oh shit, okay. Tasty? <laughs> That's cute. Fluffy as a cloud. Monomini. Hello there. I'm Mablu. Do you have a question for me? Sorry, I don't know about any electors. You should take a moment to see our prized out packets before you leave, though. Oh, be sure to admire them from respectable distance. Get too close, and our nervous darlings may be tempted to spit on you, and that stuff stinks. It happened to a visitor, uh, visiting buyer not long ago. Tobley, that's the head rancher, was so mad at me for not giving a proper warning. No one makes a mistake without Tobley noticing. All right, so I gotta go find Tobbs. Excuse me, Tobbs. Hey, I found out we need to talk. Nothing like a nice relaxing cup of coffee. Oh, dude, what if I got orange slices? <laughs> I love orange slices. Um, you really have to watch yourself around these silver dunk peddlers. I almost bought a bottle of mezcal and a stack of blankets, and then there was this enchanting ornament. Anyway, did I mention to learn, uh, did I manage to Anyway, I did manage to learn that Toby's the man to talk to about the contest. Now, if only they'd share where this head ledgers of theirs uh, were to be found. Really? He's also the head rancher? Well, the alpaca ranch is not far from here. I say we pay a visit before others return. If Stanley would be like, it was a fine deal. Don't stress it. It was fine. Also, why does my Estinian sound like the guy from Shogun? John Blackthorn! This is right! The more expensive the booze, the better. <gasps> That's a lot of alpacas! Still, we know the head ledger could be, uh, be here somewhere. I can't let fear deter me. N not to say that I'm scared, of course. <laughs> Little JC was like... Excuse me, is one of these workers doubly? Probably. Oh yes, likes to mingle with the ranch hands and keep uh, an eye on things. I can't tell you which one he is though. You can't? Is that part of the contest? All I can say is that Toby often mentions his favorite pungent subjects. Subject even. He also can't resist a profitable trade. Though who among us could, am I right? Still, if you bring him a very good deal, he might let his identity slip. <laughs> so it's like a game. Easy enough. All I have to do is offer Tobley a deal he can't ignore. No problem at all. Well, maybe one problem. 
I don't think my purse is deep enough to pay everyone what I uh, we think uh, might be Tobli. Let's ask some questions first to narrow down the field. Great! We can meet back here and share our impressions. I'm Tobli. I, I'll do a good Tobli impression. Hey, I've got a trade for you. It's me, Tobli. You think I might be Tobli? Yeah, well, maybe I am. All I'll say is, in this village, none have reared more Pacos than I. Am I Tobli? Yes, yes, that's me. Excellent work from the third promise and her entourage sharp instincts. Shall we commence the right of succession then? Ah, a visitor from across the salt, if I'm not mistaken. Be warned, the alpacas will spit if you startle them. I suggest you keep your movements slow and deliberate. Well, obviously I'm not Toby. I mean, oops, I shouldn't have said that. You meant to find out yourself who Toby is, or if an elector is even in the village at all. Good luck. The hell? Oh, I thought it wanted me to talk to the. I was like the alpaca. That's right, the alpaca is Toby. I see we're both done with our interrogations. So who do you think it is? I have my suspicions, but let's hear your pick. What was the one? What was the? I'm going to say diligent ranch hand. Ah, the worker's so intent on stable chores. I had my on that one too. Time to rip the mask off our mystery ranch hand, so to speak. We know it's you, Tobli, and to prove it, I propose a deal. A generous sum of coin for confirmation of your true identity. An offer I gladly accept. As you have correctly yes, I am indeed Tobli, head ledger of Watch and Palo, and head rancher of the family ranch. I am also one of Ghoul Jaja's chosen electors. Aha! In a place featured in the Tuliolo saga, just as we thought. It was right to trust your instincts, and I wager this won't be the last time. She found you out fair and square, Tobley! Little did she know my full name is Tobley Roan. I'll wait for you to catch up. I'll wait for you to laugh. I'll, I'll pause for laughter. I'll continue pausing for laughter. I believe a boo is not a laugh. <laughs> Saying uh is not a laugh, unless it's uh. <laughs> And I'm glad she did. What a pity <laughs> had her bid ended here. Deducing the Don Servant's elector was the first step of defeat. Too simple a task for this aspiring ruler, eh? Right. Not hard at all. Oh, here we go. The Rolja. I am told the head ledger, Tobli, is to be found here. Uh, every, every voice is the sexiest voice in the continent. And there's not one person here who sounds like... Hello, it's me. How y'all doing? Hope everyone's good. Everyone's like, well, that is my voice. 
What can I say? When I talk, you get pregnant. Like, what the hell? Every time? You have to guess which one of us is Tobli. That's part of the test. Interesting. You're Tobli. Without even asking a single question. Very impressive indeed. Without a musing prologue out of the way, we can proceed to the actual challenge. Man, rolled a, yeah, rolled a nat 20 on intimidation. That was pretty good. That was a pretty good good use of uh, graphics there. Per the Dawn Servant's instructions, I was free to devise any manner of feat. I considered the number of possibilities in the tent column. But I think I have a good one. You must go forth and capture for me an alpaca. While I've not had the best experiences with alpacas, aren't they generally docile creatures? That doesn't sound like much of a challenge. <laughs> Bring out the example! This is a special kind of alpaca. Would you please approach the animal, Third Promise? Who? Me? Well, it should stay calm if I stay calm, right? That's what Erinville said. Monster spat on me! Oh, that stinks. I can't. Alpacas are paradoxical creatures, being both extremely curious and extremely cowardly. Press your luck when they're frightened, and you'll get a face full of spit. As you've all just witnessed. I just want you to know that my mouth hung open for so long that when I went to swallow, my entire mouth and throat were dry. <laughs> Has an awful stench their expectoration. The globs contain half-digested food, you see, making it an effective deterrent against perceived threats. Wild valley breed like this one are especially timid, and can therefore be quick to lash out. <laughs> They're also especially hardy. Indeed. We take the rugged wild alpacas and breed them with our gentle domesticated stock. This produces the strong but beatable pack animals prized by our traveling merchants. <sighs> That's all well and good, but did I need to bathe an alpaca spit for you to make your point? Yes. So, the task is to catch a wild alpaca. That is correct, but be warned that it is a feat easier said than done. I suggest you prepare well before you enter the valley where the creatures dwell. Look, I don't know if you're thinking this, but this is what I'm thinking the entire time.
the entire time this guy is talking. No, no, no. This dude, Tobley, sounds like this man. Whenever he talks, all I can hear, and even though it's not the same, this is all I can hear. That's it. That's all I can hear whenever he, whenever he says anything. The inflections that he has in his voice are 100% Hondo. I don't care what anyone says. It literally sounds like Hondo. Listen to his inflections. And by you, I mean the claimants only. Allies are not permitted to assist with the catching. The alpacas will help me judge which of you is worthy of receiving a keystone. So I'm to chase down a fluffy, spitting demon, and that somehow proves I'm fit to rule? <laughs> As I said, the Dawn Servant granted me the freedom to decide my challenge. That's what it is. It's what it is. And when you reach the end of the ride, I dare say you will understand why I chose what I chose. I've never been so firm in my belief that that what's that voice sounds like. Very well. This won't take long. Kenobi! <laughs> Wait! Didn't I warn you this was easier said than done? There are preparations to be made, factors to consider. No. Nope. A beast is a beast. All yield to strength. Damn, see? Here's the thing. Tell me I'm wrong. The other guy, he's too comically evil to be the bad guy. This dude is so going to be far, like... this experience has done absolutely nothing to improve my opinion of alpacas. But that doesn't mean I can't do this. Revolting spit aside, they're just another animal. Oh, hey, gang. Hi. Are you all right, Oclamart? We thought we heard you scream. The third promise does not scream. It was more of a startled yelp. Uh, scream, in other words. Oh, uh, little Did you JC's find the Elector? face animations are so good. They're always hilarious. Oh, we certainly did. What? Did I get wad? Ah! Oh, up there. That's an upper. That's an upper wall. I've done <laughs> Kenobi. I've done my duty and assigned a claimant. Yeah, all right. Stupid. I was impressed by how easily Zoralja found Tobli, but also sort of frightened. Judging by the volume of what about scream, alpaca ex expectoration must have a nasty odor indeed. I'm content to remain ignorant of the smell. Zeralja puts me in mind of Garlemald's own exalted son. One of two, though. Zena says undeni uh, undeniably more arrogant. If you keep bringing him up, he will come back. He's coming back, baby. 7.1. He's coming back. Of the two, though. Right, not one. Of, of the two, though, Xenos is undeniably more arrogant. He's coming back. Get over it. He's coming back. 
So, this is our sought after Electal. Ahem. <clears throat> Hurdy gurdy, urgin bigger. I, I did say, say remaining calm was key, but the same rules don't apply to wild alpacas. I don't like it. I don't like it. I had to go and wash that nasty stuff off my face. I think I got all of it. But would you mind taking a sniff for me? Just to make sure. The stench has ruined my sense of smell. Hey, I saw that look. New gloves. Nice. I recognize this music. It's about to get goofy. As work look. As work. Erding with Gurdin. Fergie with Gurdin. I got this. I'm going to do this. As work Lamont helped demonstrate. The Valley Alpacas are wary of people. Getting close enough to catch one will not be an easy task. Easy. Not be an easy task. You might have warned me about that earlier. I have enough trouble with tame alpacas. How do you expect me to wrangle a wild one? With the proper saddle, we infuse the leather with a relaxing scent that soothes the spitting beast. Wonderful. Give me one of those then. Have you perhaps forgotten we are a clan of merchants? If you want a taming saddle, then you need to find a saddler and make them an offer. They don't come cheap, of course. All right, yeah, all right, fine. The thousands call them. You mean 10,000 Pell? I don't have that kind of coin. Converting to gill that comes to around a million or so? May happen if we all pitch in. No, no, this is my feat to accomplish. Wouldn't feel right having others pay the cost. I'll find the money somehow. In that case... That basket of wool is worth the sum you paid me earlier. One Pell in the hundreds column. Beginning with the wool, you can trade for ever more valuable goods. This is what we're doing? Awesome, okay, so we can bargain for a saddle. That's a nice gesture. Do you think I can turn a hundred Pell into a million? That's 10,000 times more. We need, we need, 10,000 pal, not a million. So we're looking at a hundred times more. Oh, right. I panicked and got confused with Alphano's million gill. I got nothing for this voice. I can't do this voice to save my life. It's embarrassing me. I'm not so sure about this trading idea. You were almost talked into buying cloak. You didn't need mere moments after you arrived. It's too much Dracula. It's too Dracula. But I just... God, I hate it when you're right. I can't do it. I just can't. Let me help you with your deal making. Uh, hello again. Uh... Blue. I work here as a ranch hand, but I've also learned a lot about the peddler profession. Is that alright if I eat them now, yes? Uh, I guided the claimants towards the first step of the feat, like you asked. As long as Wok Lamont goes alone to capture her alpaca, she is free to accept assistance from whoever she likes. Hey, let's see uh, about getting you a saddle then, third promise. 
I don't know why you made your offer, but I could use an ally with a beak for bargains. Welcome aboard, Mablu. Should the rest of us stay behind, perhaps? It may be easier to haggle over prices without so many voices chiming in. Yes, yeah, stay here and pitch in with the ranch work. Cool. So cool. Gladly, although little, I think you should go with Wak Lamont. Oh, thank God. You've seen the markets and bazaars the world over and surely have sage advice to share. Right. Yep. I certainly do. <clears throat> Hold on. I can do this. Jürgen Gergen, Skirgen Bekirgen. In that case, you should also hold on to the abaca wool. If it's misplaced or soiled in some way, you'll have nothing to bargain with. That's better. As if I do such a thing. But I'll leave the wool with little anyway. The better to keep my hands free. Again, I suggest uh, we try trading the wool to Havley, the saddler. He won't agree to the deal, of course, but he'll give us an idea of how much he'll accept for his wares. Oh, a bit like Kermit the Frog? That's R Kermie here. That's R Aaronville. D Kermit the Frog here. That's what Urgen Bergen. This is oh boy. No, nope, that doesn't. Hold on, hold on, hey, hold on. Tending the alpa tending the alpacas, are we? I had some experience with that when I was younger. <laughs> ah, it's terrible. <laughs> That's right. This is how I talk now. Is it really possible to make a hundred times? What this wool is worth just through trading? I don't know, we'll find out. Ah, <laughs> uh, something I can do for you? We've come to bargain. I need one of your special taming saddles to catch and wild up back A saddle, is it? And how will you be paying for it? This basket of fine alpaca wool. What use does a saddle maker have for wool? Besides, it would barely cover the cost of a single strap buckle. Offer me something I actually want. What is it you want? And what might that be? Cow. I like to nurse a cup at day's end while I inspect my finished work. Bring me a jug of quality stuff and you've got yourself a deal. A circus of value. This bodes well for us, Third Promise. Such mezcal can be had for only five uh, five pal in the thousands column. Hold on, hold on. Did you say Third Promise? Then my offer has changed. The saddle's going to cost you a jug of premium mouse cow. Age three years at least. Three years? That stuff is valued in 10,000 pell or more. Why have you doubled the price? Because I must support the man of ambition who will see my business prosper. Prosper. Zeralja will go to war and his cavalry will need saddles. Lots of saddles. It's nothing personal, third promise. But I won't sell you my craft for anything less than my asking price. OK. 
can't say I blame him. I'm known for championing peace, and peace is unlikely to bring in more customers. Those of your grandparents' generation remember the dark days when uh, the clans were at war. Those of R. Many of these Pelu pray for your victory, Waklamot. The younger ones, though, to them, strife and bloodshed are as children's stories. They think themselves safe from these horrors and take the peace we now enjoy for granted. Still, others are unsatisfied with this quiet prosperity and crave the future the second promise envisions. They become obsessed with innovations like dirigibles uh, made it swift and easy. When you have those like Havley convinced the first promise's plans for conquest will afford them opportunities for great profit. But what about you, Mablu? Oh, but what about you, Mablu? Aren't you of a younger, of the younger generation? At least a year or two younger than me, I'd say. I'm 85 years old. Oh. Oh, I was raised on the old tales. I memorized the accounts of what it was like when the Yak Huey ruled our village. That's why I offered to help. I want you to become Dawn's servant, to keep our nation from going back to the way it was. Well then, I guess I better make sure I win the contest. Well, the type of mezcal saddle maker wants is so very expensive. Weren't we expecting to need 10,000 pelt from the outset? Nothing's changed. We just need to get on with it. We just need to get on with it. I may not have a head for trade or a stomach for alpacas, but I won't give up with the piece of Tuliolo on the line. Tuliolo on the line. Then neither will I. We will make you the Dawn Servant. Aiming for that 10,000 Pell Jug right away won't, will only bring us uh, failure and frustration. So let's try exchanging the wool for anything even a touch more valuable. The trick is to find someone who needs alpaca wool and is willing to trade at a loss to acquire it. Someone who supports your bid for the throne, for instance. Of course, the Weaver! Bol Nook was his name, I believe. He went out of his way to agree, uh, to say he agreed with my vision, and he was here to buy wool! I think I remember the direction he was going, but for now, let's head back to the road where we first met him. What are you doing in there? What a nice doggo. This is the spot. After Bonok talked to us, he walked off to the south. He probably was looking, uh, he's probably going to Ikuvlo's Icu Inn. Ikuvlo! Uh, most visitors to Wachun Pelo end up staying there. Let's go and check it out, shall we? I love their little alpaca stone carvings. Look at this. Look at this. Look at them. They're so cute. Can I have that basket, little? 
There you go. Some good wool. Thanks. Now let's see if we can turn a profit. Ball knock, I'm glad we found you. Are you interested in making a trade? Third promise, you you wish to do business with me? Might I ask what this is all about? <laughs> Look, I need you to give me something and it's gotta be better than what I got. If you wanna help me, you'll do it. I see, so the goal is to turn that basket of wool into a jug of three-year-old premium mezcal? Then allow me to invest in your efforts! Peace to all is what allows me to cross freely into the lands of my suppliers. Naturally, I would prefer that one pledge to preserve that peace win the throne. Thus, I humbly offer you this wool poncho, a small token that I pray contributes to the victory. Oh, that's fine craftsmanship. A garment like that could easily fetch five pell in the hundreds column. That's very generous, Bolnock. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. I have every faith in you, Third Promise. May fortune bless your future dealings. Okay, bye. I can't believe you quintupled your investment within your first deal. We're off to a spectacular start. Only because little remembered our weave friend. All I did was hand over the wool. That's not true. The connections you build with people are vital. This is one of the most fundamental precepts of trading. One which you've instinctively mastered. You, you think so? I know so. Now let's take our 500 pill poncho and trade it for something even more valuable. Here little, you take the poncho. If I lost it somehow, Aaronville would never let me hear the end of it. All set, our next deal is waiting to be found. Believe it. <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. connections is a sound strategy, but we should also consider supply and demand. An individual in urgent need of a good poncho will offer more than a merchant simply looking to stock his shelves. That makes sense, but how do we know if someone needs a poncho? <laughs> they aren't wearing one? <laughs> they have a fabulous sense of style. Maybe they aren't wearing one. That seems simple. Man, don't overthink it, little JC. That's the obvious answer, isn't it? We should look for a person without a poncho and hope they're eager to buy ours. Yes, there you go. We find the demand for our supply. So, where should we begin our search for prospective buyers? There are any number of places we could do worse than starting right here at the inn there might be interested travelers. Hmm, who here needs a poncho? A lot of mumbles y'all hardly wear anything to begin with. Those are probably Landsguard cell or cell swords. Mumbles y'all, who soldier for a living, prefer not to wear much above the waist. It hampers their movements. So even if they have bared shoulders, Mamelja carrying arms can be stuck, uh, struck off the list. So not this guy. This guy already has a poncho. This guy has a spear or something, but this guy's got nothing. 
let's see. No cloak, coat or cloak, but also no weapon. Ooh, he might, uh, we might have a winner. Ho oh, there, friend. You're not a mercenary by trade, right? I was curious about your bold choice of dress, or lack thereof. Oh, it was no choice of mine, believe me. I was attacked by beasts on the way here and barely escaped with my scales intact. My coat was not so lucky. I'm actually a toolmaker from Tuliolol and was dressed quite smartly. All the better to show the Pelo a man who takes pride in his appearance and therefore his work as well. But now look at me. Well, sir, this is your lucky day. Yep. What a splendid poncho! This could be a perfect replacement for the coat I lost. We'd be willing to part with it if you'd like to make a trade for one of your fine tools, perhaps? What about this hatchet? I crafted it myself and will vouch for its quality. That blade looks sharp and half uh, well made. I'd value it as one Pell in the thousands column. Oh, ho, from 500 to 1,000, we have a deal. Wonderful, a fine garment such as this would put me on even footing with any Pelu merchant. Like the eponymous owner of Miplu's Mate Garden for one. Her field hands use hatchets to harvest the mate. Mate, oh, mate. I don't know why I thought mate. I don't know why I, I assumed it was mate, like a mate garden. And I thought to myself while reading, what the hell is a mate garden, Jesse? What, wh why would you garden mates? What's that shit about? What's, what's that, what's that, what's that about? What is, what is a mate garden? I thought to impress her with the tool I sold you. No matter, I have other wares to sell. Glad to have met you. Did you hear that? We've already found our next buyer. To Miplu's Mate Garden we go. Yes, but it's a fair distance on foot. We could take alpacas. These ones will be calm, right? I don't know shit. Excellent trade! You can get yourself an herba mate? That's good stuff. Well done recognizing the toolmaker as a potential customer. If you have a mind to change professions, you make an excellent merchant. Hey. Ruby down here. I'm slowly starting to put together a bunch of gear for uh, my Viper. What is this? Cooking mezcal and honey yellow dye. All right, well, I see your honey yellow dye and I raise you 240 coke. Fair trade. Fair trade. Before we get moving, you should be the one to hold this. Just an ax? You're just gonna give me an ax to hold? With that, I suppose we should hop on the alpacas. Ma Blue uh, has so kindly provided. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Ready to go, let's mount up. Riding alpacas. Uh -oh. And it's off to the Monte Fields we go. Please don't spit, please don't spit. You'll be fine, these ones are accustomed to people. So cute. 
I still don't trust them. You have an act for writing no matter what you say. Without our alpaca friends, we Pelu would never have become traveling merchants. Can you imagine walking all the way across to Rawl? The Silver Lobo. I mean, I wish I could see the mountain. <laughs> Walker's armor. Right. Never appreciated up close. I mean, it's cool. So, Mablu, you said you were learning about the peddler profession? Uh, you don't care? Oh, you don't- oh, damn it. I love working with alpacas. Becoming a peddler has always been a dream of mine. It's just, I'm not sure I have the talent for it. If I can help you by taming, uh, by the taming saddle, though. Yeah, all right. In that case, you best get ready to be a merchant. It's, it, it's, it's my blues dream. And Wak Lamont is just out here fulfilling dreams. We made it without a single smelly incident. I sent the alpacas back to uh, Kuvlo's Inn, so we'll walk along the main road when we return to the village. Speaking of roads to travel, you were adopted by the Dawn Servant, weren't you, Third Promise? That I was. And perhaps you understand, I was an orphan too, you see. Tobley took me in. He took uh, in all the ranch hands, actually. All of them? Yes, and everyone works hard in their chores. Great for the opportunity to repay the head ledger's generosity. Yet here I am, the only one who wants to go off and be a merchant. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you this. We need to keep trading things for your saddle if we're going to prepare for the feet of gold. As it's Monte harvesting season, they can't have too many quality hatchets. And to that, add to that what Lamont's way with people, we should have no trouble making a favorable deal. That's Miplu herself over there. Pass the hatchet uh, to the third promise and let's get to bargaining. Have that little axe for me? Little? This is a huge. This is a huge axe. This axe is very big. Massive axe. Some say the largest axe I've ever seen. Thanks. Now to see what we can get for it. Your Miplu, the owner of these fields. I have a mind to trade if you're interested. the third promise I might be convinced to entertain a proposal what do you have on offer this hatchet forged by a seasoned artisan the razor edge of this exceptional tool will make light work of your crops hmm the quality is acceptable I suppose I'll offer you a large sack of mate leaves in exchange Second Monty leaves is valued at one bell in the thousand column, the same price as the hatchet. This deal will bring us no closer to the mezcal. If I may, Mistress Miplu, its harvesting season, is it not? Does not the demand for hatchets afford them a higher value? It is indeed the season, which is why I procured an ample batch of tools well in advance. We've missed the window for demand. In that case, we'll have to fall back on connections. Think of it this way, a generous deal here 
will put you in the third promise's good graces. Surely that's worthy of consideration. I do not wish to give offense, but I must tell you that I stand with the second promise. His innovations will improve every aspect of our lives, I believe, including farming. And I will no longer have need of hatchets. I assure you, I have nothing against, uh, nothing but respect for Wok Lamont. That is why I am prepared to purchase a spare hatchet at a fair price. I suppose it is fair given your reasons, but we ourselves would be no better off for the transaction. How about this then? If we were to help bring in your harvest, would you give us a better deal? As a matter of fact, I would. Till Conus reforms come about, I can always use more hands in the fields. Then you go ahead and add our labor to the bargain. <laughs> Added value to tip the scales? How could I have forgotten one of the most basic rules of trading? You can rest here if you like, Mablu. Lil and I have, uh, have mate to... I thought that... I realized it says have mate together, but for some reason my brain says Lil and I have mate together. And I was like, what the shit? <laughs> what are you... What? What are you... What are you... What are you saying? Oh no, I'm helping too! Off to the fields then, and mind you, pick the healthy leaves. It'll take five good bundles from each of you. At least we have a number. Okay, 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 okay. Did you see how Wakamot came to my rescue there? She really is good with people. Oh yeah, we gotta get the verdant leaves. You can't get those non-verdant leaves. I wasn't sure Mipler would bite, but it goes to show that not uh, that you never know until you try. Blah, 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 blah. What the hell kind of name is Gorpley? A good ass name. It's a, na it's a name that I would have thought up. Gorpley McGee. Have you ever had someone make fun of your name? Not me. Around here, Gorpley is a totally normal name, and anyone who says otherwise can kiss my schnorg. That's what we call butts here. I, Gorpley, want you to kiss my snorg. You brought me some leaves then? Yeah. An acceptable harvest. We'll see how your companions fare before I make any decisions, though. Here, we brought our share as well. Thank you, Third Promise. This is more than enough to hold up your end of the bargain. Now it's time to honor mine. After adding the value of your labor to the price of the hatchet, I'm prepared to offer you a full sack of our highest grade Monte leaves. Premium Monte bought at the shop. One stack of those leaves could cost no less than five pell in the thousands column. 
Then we bid farewell to this hatchet. I'll give it a good home. Uh, talk of conscience aside, I'm glad we come to a mutual agreeable trade. As am I. All the best with the rest, uh, all the best with the rest of the, of your harvest. For some reason, I thought she was about to break out into a rhyme. All the best with the rest with the harvest. Harvest. All the best with the rest of your harvest. Yep, that's it. Close enough. Mablu, what's wrong? It's as I was saying before. Even after everything Tobley's done for me, I'm planning to abandon it all and become a merchant. But then I needed your help after forgetting the basic rule of trade. How can I expect Tobley to accept my decision then? Uh, have you mentioned your plans to leave? Wait, so you intend to give up? I can't. After getting a taste of real trading, I want to be a merchant more than ever. Merchant, more than ever. Then you'll just have to be honest. I seek to follow in my father's footsteps, but not because he expects it of me. I want to preserve Toral's peace and become Don's servant. Becoming Don's servant happens to be the best way to do it. You should live a life of your own choosing. And I wouldn't be surprised if Tobley held the same opinion. So talk to him. You're right. It's better to find out for sure than worry over what he might say. Thank you for your advice. But first, we have a saddle to buy. I want that success under my belt so I can be sure of my decision. What's next then? We try to trade our leaves for something halfway to 10,000 Pell? No, I think we're close enough now. I say we go straight for the premium mezcal. A circus of value. Bargain our way into double the value, eh? Think you can do it? Trust me, I'll make this trade work. I admire you, Third Promise. That you're holding your own against such strong competition for the throne is inspiring. Because everyone thought you would fail. Just fail. Just really be the worst. We all thought you were a nobody. A complete loser. And the fact that you're here is amazing. Uh, am I really holding my own against Kona and Zoroja? I mean, of course I am. I'm Wak Lamot. Of the Dawn's promise, after all. <laughs> I'll take my quest complete. Got that top grade, Mate. Before we go, let me give you the mate leaves. I don't need the risk proving Aaronville's point. I mean, you could try to take them. Ready then? Our next stop is... Oh, our next stop is the Mount's Cow Distillery! Yay! <laughs> you, you, you. What is this? All right, all right, all right. Is this the is this the uh the fan fest fish? All right, all right, all right. Shout out to the fan fest fish. It is a fish. I'm gonna trade you one paint. Enjoy. All right, Ooh. all right, all right. Yeah. What is this? Blend for every taste. Hold on, hold on. <gasps> These sons of bitches. 